Dear lovely viewers, welcome to another interesting math video that quickly provides a lasting solution to this Harvard University entrance exam math problem. So we are to find the cube root of 5 minus 2 root 13. And we are doing so without a calculator. So hence, we shall use the algebra. Now the square root of 13 multiplied 2 is greater than 5. So the domain of this solution is that 5 minus 2 radical 13 should be less than a 0. Then we say, OK, let A equal to the cube root of 5 minus 2 rad 13 and B equal to the cube root of the conjugate, 5 plus 2 radical 13. Now, if we take the cube on both sides of these two expressions, for the first, we're going to be having a cubed equal to 5 minus 2 radical 13 is our equation 1. If we do the same for the second guy here, we're having b cubed equal to, okay, 5 plus 2 radical 13. So this is our equation 2. We add these two equations together. We add these two equations together. We're going to be having a cubed plus b cubed equal to 5 plus 5. That will be 10. Okay, the radicals we subtract out. So we can call this equation free. And because of the a cubed plus b cubed here, we are going to use a well-known binomial formula. We know that uh, we know that a plus b whole cubed either using Pascal triangle or binomial expansion or repeated multiplication three times, it's going to give us a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Now, if we try to factorize, we're going to be having a plus b whole cubed equal to I will isolate a cubes, the cubes. Sorry for the slip. I will isolate the cubes, a cubed and b cubed. a cubed plus b cubed. Then we have 3a squared b plus 3ab squared. Then the next thing we shall do is to see if we can factor out something between these last two guys. So a plus b whole cubed, that will be a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab into a plus b. Okay, this makes this makes a lot of sense. So it means that we have to find the value of a multiplied b. So because we have a to be the cube root of 5 minus 2 radical 13, b equal to the cube root of the conjugate, which is 5 plus 2 radical 13, we can say that a multiplied b is going to be cube root of 5 minus 2 radical 13 multiplied 5 plus 2 radical 13. Okay. So this is going to give us the cube root. It's a difference of two squares. We're going to be having five square here, which is 25. Then two rad 13 squared. Two multiply two, that's four. Rad 13 multiply rad 13. That will be 13. 13 times four, that should be 52. So this is going to give us the cube root of negative 27, which is equal to negative three. So we can then say that a dot b or a multiplied b equal to negative 3. It's another very vital equation. We call it equation 4. And the next thing we shall do is to work on this a plus b whole cubed. I can actually name this equation uh, equation 3 star for clarity. Okay, from equation 3 star, from Equation 3 star. 
If I isolate A cube plus B cube as subject, I'll be having A plus B whole cubed minus 3AB into A plus B. That's what we are going to have. There. Now, we are going to make a substitution. If we say, okay, let u equal to a plus b. This will guarantee our homecoming. So we know that a cube plus b cube equal to 3, which is equation. No. Sorry for the slip. A bit of a excited is a nice problem. From equation 3, a cube plus b cube equal to 10. Okay. So, we're going to be having 10 equal to, we said A plus B should be U. That would be U cubed minus 3. Our AB is negative 3. So, we have negative 3, multiply negative 3, then negative 3, then multiply U. So, we're going to be having 10 equal to U cubed plus, okay, then 9u. Very interesting, right? So we are going to be having u cubed plus 9u minus 10 equal to 0. So this is, easy, this is easily factorable. No need to use identity division. So we can actually solve this by factorization. All I need to do is to split this 10 into 1 and 9 such that one is a cube and one is a perfect square. So I will say, okay, u cubed plus 9u minus 1 minus 9 equal to 0. So you can see what we have done here. So minus 1 is a perfect cube, minus 9 is a perfect square. So I can take u cube and 1 together, then 9u minus 9. And I will factorize by, by grouping. Before we do so, we need to still go to our algebra toolbox. We know that, recall, we know that A cubed minus B cubed can be factorized as A minus B in one parenthesis, multiply A squared plus AB plus B squared in another parenthesis. So therefore, U cubed minus 1 can be written as u cubed minus 1 cubed. And if we factorize this, it's going to give us u minus 1 in one parenthesis. In the other parenthesis, we'll be having u squared plus u plus 1. So we're going to have. So if I come back to this equation here, in place of u cubed minus 1, I shall write this. I'll then be having u minus 1 u squared plus u plus 1 plus 9u minus 9 equal to 0. So, if I factor out 9 here, I'll be having u minus 1, u squared plus u plus 1, 9 I will have u minus 1 equal to 0. So you cannot see that these two guys and these two guys, they have u minus 1 in common. So we are going to be having, okay, u minus 1. Then we have u squared plus u plus 1 can see that we are using u minus 1 to divide into these two guys. u squared plus u plus 1 is left. Then if we use the same u minus 1 to divide these two guys, 9 is left. So we write 9 here equal to 0. So we'll be having u minus 1, u squared plus u plus 10 equal to 0. So from the zero product property, it 
it implies that uh, u minus 1 equal to 0, which implies that u equal to 1. So that's our first solution for u. But we are also going to solve uh, u squared plus u plus 10 equal to 0. But before we solve, we need to test. It's not factorable. We test for the discriminant d equal to b squared minus 4ac. So our a is 1, b is 1, c is 10. So this is going to be 1 squared minus 4 multiply 1 multiply 10. And that's going to give us 1 minus 40, which is equal to negative 39. So it means that this quadratic does not have three roots. So we can only look for the solution in the complex plane. So we shall reject this quadratic. So we we'll reject this. So our only solution and true solution is u equal to 1. Hence, the only true solution, the only true solution is u equal to 1. And along the line, we made a vital substitution. We said that uh, u equal to a plus b. And u is 1. So we can then write a plus b equal to 1. We can call this an equation. Let's call this equation 5. Then we also know that a multiplied b is negative 3. So a, b equal to negative 3. I can't really remember the equation. That should be equation, equation 4 or so. So we have a plus b equal to negative 1. We are going to solve these two guys simultaneously. Now, I'm going to use another algebraic identity. I know that A minus B is given by this formula here, A plus B whole squared minus 4AB. So A minus B is going to be plus or minus the square root of, uh, okay, sorry, this one, A plus B equal to one, our equation five. So that becomes a one square, then minus four multiplied. The value of a b is negative three. So guys, we are going to be having a minus b equal to plus or minus the square root of one plus a twelve. So a minus b equal to plus or minus the square root of a thirteen or rad thirteen. Then. I can then solve my simple simultaneous equation. I will say case one. Case one. I know that a plus b equal to one. Then a minus b, I will take the positive value. So a minus b equal to radical 13. So I will solve this simultaneously. So we are going to be having, I will add these two equations. We are going to be having 2a equal to one plus a radical 13. Okay? I divide both sides by 2. I'll be having A equal to 1 plus radical 13 upon 2. I can write this to be half 1 plus a radical 13. Then the value of b, we know that a plus b, a plus b equal to 1. So b is going to be 1, okay, minus b. That will be 1 minus 1 plus radical 13 all upon 2. So therefore, B is going to be, okay, 2 minus 1 plus radical 13 
all upon 2. So if I use negative to distribute this parenthesis, I'll be having 2 minus 1 minus radical 13 all upon 2. And B will now give us a 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus radical 13 all upon 2, which is the same thing as half, 1 minus radical 13. And guys, we are almost there. Recall, we said the cube root of uh, 5 minus 2 radical 13 is equal to the cube root. Okay, look at this equal to A. Then we already have the value of A. That means that, uh, and we said again that the domain is that 5 minus 2 out of 13 should be less than 0. So it therefore means that we need to look for the other values for A and B, respectively, because it's actually greater than 1. Then we we'll then say case 2. Case 2. In case 2, okay, I'll take this off. We are going to take the negative value of a minus b. We know that a plus b equal to 1, then a minus b equal to radical 13, and that's going to be a negative. If we also add, we are going to be having 2a equal to 1 minus a radical 13. If I divide both sides by 2, a will be 1 minus radical 13 divided by so I can write it as half 1 minus radical 13. So guys, because we said that the domain is such that the value of A should be less than 0, we can then say categorically and emphatically that the cube root, the cube root of 5 minus 2 radical 13 is equal to 1 minus radical 13 all divided by 2. So this is the solution to this problem. So guys, if you like and you enjoyed this video, please do well to share with your learning friends and colleagues. And please subscribe to this community so that we can be more motivated to do more. See you next time and stay blessed.